So how is it that I got to go to Canada and eventually start this music festival? In the mid-1970s, uh, I met my friend Karen Davis, and shortly before that, she had purchased this beautiful home in uh, Lambton, Quebec. Karen asked me if I'd like to come up there that summer and uh, spend some time having a holiday, uh, and I agreed to do that. So in the summer of 1977, I went up there for about two weeks or so, and I really enjoyed uh, the beautiful countryside, the lake, canoeing, meeting new friends, and things like that. Uh, Karen would have people over to the house, I would play some informal concerts, and it was really quite a wonderful experience that left a big impression upon me. In 2003, uh, Pat Biancoli and myself were asked to play a concert at the Moulin in Corcel. Uh, through some mutual friends, uh, they had talked to uh, Pauline Joban at the uh, Moulin. She was director at the time, and she agreed to sponsor this concert in Quassel, where Pat and I would come up and play a duo concert. So we uh, agreed Pat had never been to Canada before to that part, and he was excited about coming up there. So we went up and prepared for the concert a few days before, and one day we were in the Lambton tourist office, and we met this young soprano, Valerie Belanger, who is going to be starting at the Quebec Conservatory that fall uh, to study opera. So uh, that relationship with Valerie uh, starts from there. And in the festivals that followed, in the following years, Valerie sang at so many festivals, and she still does in the present. And um, her and her whole family have been such a supportive part of the festival. After our successful concert in 2003, Pat and I and his wife, Kathleen McDonald, were talking about the idea of starting a little music festival in Corcel. And the board at the uh, Moulin uh, so graciously and generously agreed to the idea. And Pauline was so excited about it. She was director of the Moulin and she would have to organize the uh, events and things like that. Uh, and Everyone is really quite excited about this. So in 2006, we had our first festival up there with Pat and I and Kathy, who plays flute and Baroque flute. And Barbara Fusco, mezzo-soprano, a colleague, came up with us uh, and came up for many years uh, singing up, up in Canada. Uh, we had a couple of Canadian musicians playing viola da gamba and harpsichord. And Guitar Trilogy came up, uh, three guitars, James Erickson, Brian Fleming, and Andrew Foligno. And that was the first year of the festival. Now that year, the concerts took place in different villages, and that's where we started the idea of moving from place to place. So one day we'd have a concert like Guadeloupe, another one in Lambton, another one in Corcel, maybe another one at the end of the week in Lambton. And it was so great to see the collaboration of the different towns and asking, oh, you know, on Friday we'll have the guitar concert, and okay, the other town would say we'll have the concert on Monday, and so forth. So this whole idea where the festival is a moving type festival, we just don't stay in one place and give all these concerts every summer, starts from the very roots in the beginning of the festival's uh, history. And uh, the people up there, the excitement that is generated for the people there and us as the musicians was just truly wonderful and spurred us on to keep going.
So my first experience with the Midsummer Music Dream Festival going to Canada was the first year in 2006 with my Guitar Trio Guitar Trilogy. And once we crossed the border, I was just so taken by the landscape. It was just so beautiful. I'm looking at these clouds and they, they like didn't even look real. It was just, uh, just beautiful landscape. You know, I had been to Canada before, uh, but it was Toronto, it was Montreal. It was a little bit more of a um, uh, larger city type of, uh, type of location. And this was the more rural areas, which I had not seen before. One great experience that I had was one time going kayaking and we were in this beautiful lake and I kind of went off by myself at one point and um, at one point I stopped kayaking and just listened, you know, just stopped rowing and I heard complete silence and I don't think I had ever experienced that before in my life and it was quite a surreal experience to just hear nothing and because uh, we you know, always have sound all around us uh, so it was kind of really 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 cool to experience that. After the uh, wonderful success of the first festival in 2006, uh, we were all excited and the people in Canada were so excited about it. Uh, we thought, well, wouldn't it be a wonderful thing to add a string component, Get, have a violinist come and play and that would add another color to the festival and you know, opened up the range for different kinds of repertoire. So uh, my colleague at LIU Post, uh, Dale Stuckenberg, agreed to come to, for the first time and take part in this little festival that was had its beginning roots at that time. So in 2007, Dale joined us, and we again had a lot of Baroque music, guitar music, vocal music. In 2009 was the first community choir and it was a bit of a job to recruit choir members and Pauline worked very hard to get these choir members to join and a whole bunch of choir members from St. George agreed to sing.
Alexander Dashnow, Lex Dashnow, was there as the conductor. Doug March was his assistant conductor. And they would drive every day from Lampton to St. George to do these rehearsals with them. And then on the following weekend, on the Saturday night, the first concert of the Quiet Concert took place in Corcel and the Corcel Church. And they did the Vivaldi Gloria in the church. And the choir also sang uh, It's a Wonderful World. Uh, and it was this really glorious event. We had a big choir uh, with a little orchestra that Dale uh, put together. Uh, we had two flutes. Uh, we had a theorbo that uh, player um, and violins, uh, two violins. And it was just a really spectacular event and a great addition to the festival, which is, became a strong component of the festival to the present. So I've been attending this festival since about 2015, thinking back already. And, you know, I'm overwhelmed with how many wonderful memories I've had and how many people I've gotten to meet through the community and through just the community that we've built in musicians as well. Uh, you know, one of my favorite things to do is collaborate. And the festival has been an amazing vessel for me uh, in order to meet these different musicians and collaborate with such inspiring people. Some of my greatest memories are, you know, I've had the opportunity to work with piano, cello, I've gotten to sing duets, flute, recorder, I've gotten to sing lute songs. Lute songs are something I've never had the experience to do before this festival, before I was involved, uh, and I'm just so grateful because that's really transformed me as a musician. So right away, I noticed this sense of community, and not just with the musicians, many of them I've played with before, but the appreciation that the audience had, that we brought this music uh, to their towns. And I remember stepping inside these beautiful churches and I'm like looking and I'm like, I can't believe we're gonna be performing music in here. You know, what, a, what an opportunity this is. And uh, it was just, you know, they gave us this great gift of welcoming us and it was really nice to return that uh, with the music we were able to, uh, to perform for them. One nice thing about the festival is the collaborations. Um, you know, I normally play with a guitar quartet. I normally play solo. I play with, you know, various bands. Uh, but to collaborate with um, percussion, with singers, um, it's really, really a lot of unique pairings that happen uh, when we're up there in Canada. A lot of the things we kind of, um, you know, again, put together and pair specifically for uh, this festival. My first time attending the festival was the summer of 2012, so I was in my undergraduate studies at Long Island University, 
looking for a summer music opportunity. And I kind of stumbled upon the festival through Harris Becker, who I really didn't know at the time, but I just kind of took the plunge and figured, why not give it a try? I get to make some chamber music with my friends. And I mean, how bad could it be? Um, but little did I know that I would then continue to go annually for the following seven summers and never could have imagined the growth that I would experience as a musician being a part of this festival. This is absolutely hands down what sparked so much of my musicianship. As the festival went on the following year, 2010, we, we had all of these elements. We had strings, we had guitars, voices, we had the community choir. And then going into the 2011 season, we were thinking of how can we build the choral part more? And how can we have more singers? So um, another colleague by the name of uh, Thomas Goodhart, who was teaching at LIU Post and at Binghamton University, agreed to come this, that summer and bring some of his students from uh, Binghamton University to uh, the festival. And this was really the beginning of the opera studio program. And the, he brought these wonderful young singers to spend the week rehearsing, getting coachings, and then singing concerts through the week. And they would sing with the community choir people at the end of the, uh, on the, on the chorus concert at the end of the festival. And this has been a tradition ever since, and that studio, vocal studio, opera studio, has really grown into a fruitful part of uh, the festival. In January of 2013, Alexander Dashnow, our choral conductor, asked me if I'd like to have the Mozart Requiem done that summer at the festival. He also suggested that our colleague and great organist, Walter Klaus, could come and play on the Mozart and play an organ recital in the Lambton Church. Well, I thought this was an incredible idea, and that was the plan we made. In the summer of 2013, just a few weeks before the festival was to begin, the horrific train tragedy happened in Megantic, where so many lives were lost. Well, this was just horrible. So we decided that before the performance of the Mozart, we would have a candlelight ceremony, which we did. We read the names of all the victims and people spoke on their behalf and about the sorrow that the community was going through. Following that, we had the performance of the Mozart. Well, this is just such a great choral masterpiece and one of the greatest works really ever written by this one of the great geniuses of music, Mozart. And we hope that that gave some a sense of healing and community and comforted people in their grief. 